So when I used to prepare for college auditions and juries and stuff like that, I used to practice snare drum for months without thinking about how the snare drum actually sounded. I figure, practice now, tune later, right? Then a few days before the audition, I'd put on new heads and I'd just start twisting up the rods and hoping that I'd get lucky and the snare drum would sound great, but it never really happened. So flash forward to the morning I recorded my Delaclues album. I had three brand new heads and put them on three different drums and I knew the exact series of steps to go through in order to put on the heads, even out the lugs, adjust and optimize the snares, and then find the right tension for the top and bottom head in order to get it to sound exactly how I want it to sound. But the only reason I knew how to do that was because of how much I I've forced myself to go through extensive drum tuning sessions. I feel like I've experimented and worked on my drums so much that I know how it works and I know what happens if I bring up a lug a quarter turn or something like that. I want to help you figure out where to start, so today let's talk about three steps to becoming a better snare drum tuner. And then in the next few videos I'm going to talk about how to put on a new drum head, how to optimize your snares, and how to find the right pitches for the top and bottom head so it sounds right. The first step is to cram more snare drum sounds into your brain. Okay, playing percussion is sort of like speaking in English, right? I'm using words and I'm stringing them together into sentences, but underneath what I'm saying is the meaning, right? If I'm in a lesson with you and I say, play it again, then what I really mean is, that sounded amazing, like, let's hear it again. But if you play something and then I say, play it again, what I'm really saying is, you forgot to practice, you dummy. Am I wasting my time here? Same thing in the language of music. If I play this rhythm one way, I could be saying, Life is a funeral, let's all give up. But if I inflect it differently, what I'm really saying is, dude, what's about to happen is gonna be so crazy, check it out. Anyway, as a snare drummer, the core of your musical voice is the sound of your drum. The tone of the stick hitting the head, the sound of the drum ringing, the snares buzzing. The sound actually makes an emotional impact. You're saying something just by the way your drum sounds. The rookie mistake is to be satisfied with the way your drum already sounds. If you want to be a virtuoso percussionist, this needs to be your pet project, your hobby. So learn what snare drum sounds are out there and what's possible and what kind of emotional impact they make on you. What does it sound like in a Skrillex track when the snare drum is playing the back beat? What does the St. Petersburg Philharmonic sound like when they're playing Shostakovich. Is it a fat sound? Is it a compact sound? What does Buster Bailey sound like on the Schumann 3 recording with the New York Philharmonic? Go on this quest to find snare drum sounds and to internalize them. It's just like listening to the overtones of a cymbal. It's complex and it's important to dissect how it actually sounds. My favorite ever snare drum sound is Bill Bruford on Heart of the Sunrise by the band Yes. The second step is to become a tinkerer. So if you want to play with these variables of sound, the way you do it is you manipulate the physical variables available to you on the drum. You can choose the diameter and the depth of your drum by playing on different instruments, the material of the shell, the thickness of the head, how tight are the snares up against the bottom head. What happens if I bring the bottom head down a quarter turn? What happens if I add a little bit more muffling? Have practice sessions where all you do is mess with your drum and try to make it sound better. Get fluent with what happens when you make each different kind of tweak on the drum. The third step is to find your voice or work on developing your signature snare drum sound. So when I'm speaking to you, I know what I want to say and I choose what words I use to say it, but I'm also conscious of one other element. How do I want to say it? How do I want you to experience what I'm saying? How can I show you my personality and my emotion while I'm saying it? In writing, that's called finding your voice. I call it being yourself. So how can you be yourself on the snare drum? Think about it like this. For every variable you're manipulating, say you're bringing the top head up from loose to medium to tight, there's a certain range in there that you might like the best. There might be others that are acceptable, but you like this particular point. You like how it sounds. It fits how you want to make music. Start to notice that. And when you bring your drum into a lesson or to orchestra, you can use the sound of your drum in order to show your teacher or the listener your musical personality. It can be sort of difficult to define this, and there's no really right answer for this. Maybe you love the band Galactic, and you like playing rudimental music, and so you like it when your snare drum sounds kind of New Orleans-y and fat and wide, right? I'm kind of into Bill Bruford myself, and he has a really compact, tight sound. He's known for that crack, right? 
right? I think I go even further on my own drum to be more compact and tight. I want you as the listener to focus on the precision of what I'm doing. I want to be the sculptor and carve delicate shapes out of the rhythm, and I don't want the snare drum sound to be fat and get in the way of the rhythms as you're listening to it. Don't worry if you don't know how to do this yet. It develops over time as you get to be more fluent with the variables of the snare drum. But I do want to help you get started, so I am making a series of videos about how to tune your drum, right? So the first is how to put on new heads, the second is about how to optimize your snares to get great snare response at all dynamic levels, and the third is about how to find the right pitches for the top and bottom heads. Make sure you don't miss those videos by liking my Facebook page and subscribing to my YouTube channel. If you can't wait for those videos, I put together a snare drum tuning guide where I show you a checklist of every step along that process with diagrams and explanations so you can get started on your own. You can download that at robnopper.com slash tuning guide. Cool, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next videos.